from the floor as well as someone who's been around um, this field for quite a while. This is um, this something that was used in green parks in the 70s. There are literally elements here that I was in discussion with people who were in the room. Could we do this? It was just impossible at that point. So it's really fantastic to see um, so much come together with so much access. And of course, the standardization of the um, developing tools to actually look things across the European countries is um, exciting. Uh, even for me, coming from the U.S., it must be very exciting for the, uh, the audience. And I want to say that the point of us as a field, it's really important in our context that we are able to take advantage of the, um, the data sets that are available and the information that are available. And we can, if we could not allow ourselves to um, be kind of behind the frontier, on this because of who we are, because of the field that we are. So it's lovely to see this uh, coming together um, in New York. I understand this is a huge investment. I hope the resources continue. I guess, but I congratulate the, the EU for uh, investing in this. And because I can see that it's grown out of uh, earlier efforts in, in crime and that sort of thing, I, I have some uh, hope that the resources will continue. And I hope that you all are in discussion the relevant places uh, in the U.S. funding system in particular our uh, science of science and innovation policy program on the parallels of the data sets that are emerging in ways that um, there can be uh, cooperation across the Atlantic uh, as well. I think there's a wonderful array of indicators that are already in the, um, the data set and my colleagues have just uh, run uh, through that very nicely. I noticed that few of those data sets are worldwide, which is, of course, interesting to me from someone who is from outside Europe and working with many people who are uh, outside Europe. We can see the connections between Europe and the rest of the world in some of those data sets, that a few of them are actually in this um, uh, global coverage, which is a way that we need to be able to think a lot. Uh, right. I look forward. I, I have not been able to detect what I've seen uh, the presence of some of the other things that I would expect uh, to see in this kind of data, the CIS data, is in there somewhere, it's with the some other innovation uh, survey. Uh, it will be interesting to see where the university indicators are and other administrative data sets. We've done a lot in the last couple working with um, existing administrative records, the hard part being the universities, which are very decentralized in the U.S., but we have some uh, big centralized database that is part of uh, in Europe. Uh, I would say that the training that goes with this is particularly welcome. I uh, browse the uh, training manual a little bit. I understand that that's just what's emerging now, but as someone who has advised um, graduate students also in a field where, where professional people be doing learning all the time and keeping up to date with the techniques and training is going to be absolutely fabulous. And I hope that some of it can be offered in a virtual basis rather than face-to-face uh, -face so that it can really um, open up to, uh, to the world community. Um, I'm very, I want to just end, however, with, uh, with a little bit of Caution. And well, on the one hand, I'm really excited about this, and the other hand, it makes me very uh, nervous <laughs> in some ways. And what it makes me nervous about is that we have uh, the potential as a field to have our data way outgrown our concepts and our models. So I want to put in a plug, but let's try and actually get uh, conceptual development to run twice as fast as the data is available to um, to use to, um, to operationalize it. And let's make sure that we have models that are worthy of and changing as fast and growing as fast as the uh, data capability is. Um, even in a few sessions that I've been in already with this meeting, I was really impressed by how little attention presenters were giving to how they operationalize their concepts even when they had wonderful data sets that were large and, you know, uh, sounded fascinating in terms of results, but I just sat there and said, no, when did 
they actually get to that concept again and you already really trust the way they found that that concept? And it's very, very easy with big data sets of like this to just uh, kind of do something and go, oh, let me use these keywords and go look for something. And then, you know, I don't want to have to talk about that very much, then I'm off and running with the results. And that will continue to make me nervous. I hope it makes all of you nervous and I hope you can make a collective commitment to keep the concepts and the models out um, in front of the, the data. Before commenting on the panel, uh, well, on the, on the presentations, I would like to ask you how many of you already hear about open air? Uh -huh. Quite a few. Uh, so you might understand why I'm so presentation. So for the other uh, in the audience that didn't hear about open air before, uh, open air is a uh, research infrastructure funded by the European Commission that has the aim to collect all the open access but also closed access uh, output uh, coming from EU funded projects, um, meaning that we have a wealth of data uh, in, in intending publications, uh, software and research data set uh, that we are now in the process of linking and, um, and that we are in also in the process of providing services on this wealth of information. And uh, the reason why I'm so uh, glad I, I'm in this panel today and I participated uh, in this presentation is that um, uh, Open Air in this phase of the project is developing a set of dashboards. Um, because as we have uh, this amount of information, we would like to you know, uh, give back this information to funders and institutions providing the data. And here is where uh, the board read. We are in quite in identifying Now it is, uh, it is my turn. Good. Um, I'll uh, structure my talk, my intervention, uh, around three points. First, I will briefly introduce the GRC because I think it is useful to understand where I'm coming from so also that you don't overinterpret what I'm saying. Uh, second, I have a more philosophical question on research infrastructure. 
and then I was asked to suggest some research topics. And I'll, I'll suggest that. I'm not sure how feasible or how useful they will be, but it might help for, uh, for uh, stimulating the discussion thereafter. So the Joint Research Centre of the European Commission is a, a bit of a strange beast. We are a research institute, about 2,000 scientists, uh, and we are a policy, we are a DG of the European Commission on, on the other hand. So we are with one foot in both worlds, partially in the world of academia, partially in the world of policy. But we're not a policy DG and we're not a funding DG. Now sometimes we are uh, involved or we ask to be involved by colleagues from DG Research, from DG AI, to be part of uh, funded projects. For example, we have played a role we have played a role in the uh, press study of national funding uh, uh, allocation uh, uh, data collection that uh, Thomas mentioned. But in principle, we, uh, we, we, do, not, uh, we do not fund uh, research and we're just also not responsible for the research infrastructure pieces. So I think that is good to make clear that I'm not, uh, I, my, my comments will not, uh, will not have any effect on, on, uh, on this research infrastructure and further development. Um, now I want to briefly reflect on why the Commission uh, thought it was a good idea and this is my personal, uh, uh, personal opinion of why I think that the Commission thought it was an important idea to have a research infrastructure like RESIS and that is partially because uh, the Commission has been funding research projects for a long time including the field of research and innovation and this was not always done in the most sustainable manner in the sense that uh, often uh, these research projects ended and then had to be restarted and new data needed to be collected every time and often this was similar data. So I think one of the reasons for having a system like, like this is, is to have this, this done in a more sustainable manner so that we, have, we don't have to, uh, to reinvent the wheel every time. Another reason is that uh, these previous studies were not always used and exploited in the best way possible by the, by the Commission on one side, but especially also by the broader stakeholder and user community in academia. And ideally, an infrastructure like this is, would also solve that problem. Um, now, I've, I've always understood academics as entrepreneurs, and I think it's... Uh, it's uh, particular type of entrepreneurs, scientific entrepreneurs are not only interested in, in money making but also in, in, in generating scientific credibility. And uh, uh, I think this, this profit seeking uh, objective is very important because it generates a certain dynamism and it's, it is good to, to harness this dynamism for, for creating uh, value for society as a whole. But I wonder, and this is a question for the, for the research consortium and perhaps also for the, for the community as a whole, whether there is a tension in having this academic, this academic entrepreneurship and the creation of a public research infrastructure. Now I understood from the presentation before, and I, I know this, that many of these data sources uh, and this infrastructure is online and openly available. And I think that that's a very important part of this research infrastructure, that it is indeed usable for, for the outside users. Um, but my question is, is whether uh, there's a need for, for further stimulation of this, this openness by the, by the European Commission, or whether the, the, the contractual framework, etc., is, is sufficiently in place to facilitate and stimulate this, this sharing of the, of the, of the data. And then I come to a few, few research questions that I was asked to, uh, to suggest or uh, uh, develop uh, uh, here. And, and these, these are fourfold. Two or three are, are fairly, uh, fairly obvious and very straightforward. Now you know that in the new Horizon Europe there is a renewed emphasis on the European research area. And I think uh, one of the things we were missing to date is to see what the impact of the last 20 years of uh, developing this European research area has had as an effect, has had an impact on the creation of a European scientific market. And I think the, the kind of data that you, that you collect and make available allows for um, researchers, either yourself or other people here present, to deep dive into that and to, to assess what the impact of these, uh, these policy initiatives have been so far. 
Related to that is the European higher education area, and there I think we have to rely uh, in part on, uh, on, on what has been done by, uh, by, by ITER and uh, by what well, is ITER perhaps, perhaps also linking it to other data sources more in the field of, uh, of education to see to what extent we get a European higher education area and we, we get mobility of students as well as researchers uh, within, within, the, within, within the Union. Another topic that might be interesting, and I think that that is something that can uh, be explored in part also using the infrastructure that you have, uh, that you, that you have under your, uh, under your, uh, uh, under your uh, development, is to, to assess the, the innovation impact of European universities. Um, there has been a lot of uh, uh, debate for, for the last 10, 15 years that European universities do not um, do not reach their full potential in impact on their regional innovation systems, their innovation, national innovation ecosystems, and I think that would be something that can be explored to see what factors influence the ability of uh, of universities and the, the likelihood of universities to to engage more in that. Now these are all fairly straightforward issues, and the fourth issue is a little less straightforward, and it ties into the theme of this conference. Um, and possibly NOMAC is a first step in, in uh, doing that. This deals with uh, assessing the impact of research innovation uh, policies on um, societal goals. Because I think most policymakers, at least in the European Commission and also at the national level, are perhaps interested in what the impact of science is in the scientific world, the impact of innovation in uh, terms of citations, etc. But what they're really interested in is the impact of science and technological development on, on jobs, on economic growth, and on addressing societal challenges. And I think uh, we as a community at present stop short in giving them answers to that. And we are uh, still, to some extent, stuck with uh, input indicators. Uh, the number of publications, the scientific impact of the group publications, uh, patterns, citations to patterns. Um, but we will need to find ways of assessing what impact this research and uh, many research indicators this research has on uh, our ability as societies, our ability as companies, our ability as research institutes to uh, really deliver on, um, on societal issues, so growth, employment, uh, health, uh, mortality, uh, reduction of CO2. And for that we will need to develop new indicators and we will have to bridge to other community of research, research. And I think that that's the topic of this conference to some extent of how we can, how we can link and uh, go beyond our, our comfort zone and go beyond uh, what we have been doing over the last 20, 30 years to, to, uh, to see what real impact uh, research and innovation have on society. So that is a task for the research consortium, but also a task for, for all of us, I guess, to see how we can make a next step in research and innovation. So thank you. Thank you for your comment. I think they are very good and I would like to have some reaction and then I would say something from my side as a partner of the Trisis project. So we can we start with Philippe? Yes, I would like to uh, come back to three aspects. The first one is that uh, we uh, all the time while developing this project. And probably this is why we have been very progressive in the way we do. We always say that we will do big data. We build from available sources, small relevant data sets. And if they are relevant, it's because they answer questions, research questions. And thus, the question of the theory behind, uh, behind the type of data sets we build is always an important dimension in our decision to invest into a data set. Uh, the issue of the, let me take simply one issue about it. We, you discussed, and many people discussed today, the issues of uh, 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 
reference database or uh, uh, about the organizations. There are multiple attempts uh, to do it uh, um, through uh, uh, available uh, and fast developing, uh, let's say, computer techniques uh, over the internet, and they are very interesting. But they will take a long time before uh, we can safely use them. And this is why, after a long reflection, we decided to invest in building a reference dataset, which is really manual, human intensive in a way to build it. So we try to go in those places which we consider uh, crucial for the ability to develop new, uh, uh, new approaches linked to the theoretical ongoing development. So it's a slow process. It doesn't enable to do many new data sets. But it tries to really think about how does it link with theoretical debates in the community and how does it link with a number of political issues. So they, they need to be this, this, that, that do attention. So that's my And this is why we maybe do not uh, multiply data sets everywhere, anywhere, in any direction. We could have 100 or something to make open. We choose to be very progressive and to have long discussions about the people. The second thing is, is really difficult. How do you maintain them over time? That tension between entrepreneurs and an infrastructure is how do you transform people who are entrepreneurs in building something that didn't exist before, that couldn't be used before, into something that will be maintained and accessible with quality control. And really, this is the challenge we are doing. I'm not sure we will succeed. We, up to now, we are quite pleased with the development we have done, with the quality of what we produce, or we offer. But the, the conditions for it to be lasting lies in part with the, our, the ability of our labs, who are social science, to develop an engineering Path into them, and this is not easy. And it's, it's, a, it's a permanent fact. I must say. So on the long term, I cannot answer it. Mm -hmm. uh, but at least we, it will be ten years with it. Two experiments uh, makes ten years. Ten years is try creates is time for change for institutional change. Please start to be serious. And then your third question, which is about debating about uh, topics, which is what is at the core of what we are, are discussing, and we didn't know that with that idea that uh, we cannot stay with our data for researchers on. We have growing pressures about making indicators, new types of indicators, complementary types of indicators, with CIS, with OECD-based data. And this is the notion of complementarity for me that is crucial. And we need NOMAC as an experiment. Can we do it? We have sets of data. Can we do it? And basically, we have invested enough in organization to do it on the organizational side. We now have quite good uh, uh, tools for the geographical, building up all the efforts of the community, because the wide community have done efforts. But the thematic side on science, the ontology side is really a huge challenge. We thought that we could use existing tools, adapt them for science, and develop them for us. This is not true. We really have to do new developments into the process. And this is what we are faced with today, finding approaches and solutions uh, to, to try to address it, at least in a manual way, for the first time, with principles that we can make in industry. So that, 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 that question about uh, being, being able, in a way, to characterize situations before evaluating. Our effort is to offer robust characterization that we know but not talk to the people. There's nothing more damaging in public debate that not only fake, that fake news, but simply stereotypes. We live in policies with stereotypes. We listen to your policy makers. And in whatever, how many stereotypes do you believe in? 
So we are there to sort of enrich the public, yes. help to enrich the public debate, to provide background to the public debate. And, far, and before we can go to evaluation, which is far more complex. So data is not evaluation. Evaluation requires that we have value judgment processes and data, is, data or information is an input that to evaluation. So in fact, analysis, and you can ask my colleagues here in the front, we've been, it's now nine years that we're about the impact, uh, the social impact of our research organizations. 